Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard to another Kaptan Baja video. Two weeks ago, I was lucky enough to fly a Model 12 Lockheed aircraft in Wichita, Kansas. I mean, how many times do you get a chance to fly a vintage aircraft like that? Not many times. You want to hear about and see my experience? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Many times in your life you get a chance to fly a 1930s aircraft. I was lucky enough to be able to do that about two weeks ago. I was in Wichita, Kansas, and I was there for Aviation Contact Creators Award. Felt like I was a kid at a candy store. I'm telling you, beautiful, a lot of beautiful airplanes, very beautiful people. Everybody was fantastic. And the highlight of my trip, well, one of the highlights, was the fact that I get to fly a Lockheed Model 12 aircraft. So what is a Lockheed Mo Model 12 aircraft? Well, these are basically Electra series airplanes that they were built by Lockheed Aircraft Corporation. They actually started out with the Model 10, which is a lot bigger than this. And the purpose of that is, was to basically to build an airliner. This was the time that DC-2 was coming up. This is the time that uh, other transport ca category aircraft were designed and built. But interestingly enough, the, the reason why this air aircraft was built also because of the fact that in October 1934, U.S. government said no more single engine aircraft to transport passengers and people at night. So Lockheed has found itself in a very good position for that because they were in the process of developing the uh, Model 10 airplane. And interestingly enough, there's a very interesting connections to the aviation history and also the other parts of the history uh, with the Model 10 aircraft. So what are those connections? When they were building this aircraft, when they were doing the wind tunnel tests, an aviation graduate student named Clarence Johnson was basically uh, recommending the company to ditch the single tail version of the aircraft and go with the dual you know tail version that we see in the aircraft these days so this was actually aerodynamically a better option and interestingly enough the company went with that it almost became the company's um, trademark to use this kind of a tail structure it they did it with the model 10 they did it with the Model 12 and then the Model 14. Who's Clarence Johnson? Well, if you know a little bit more about the aviation history that you will see, you will know that he was the guy behind Skunk Works that gave us two beautiful, fantastic aircraft in our aviation history. One is U-2 and the other one is SR-71. Model 10 also was the same aircraft that Amelia Earhart used on her quest to fly around the world. Unfortunately, she didn't make it, but at the same time, it was an airplane that it was used for that purpose. It was bigger than the one that I flown and carried more passengers. It was also an airplane was, that was sort of used in the famous movie, Casablanca. I'll have to arrest you, of course. As soon as the plane goes, Louis. Should I do my Bogart impression in here? He's looking at you, kid. No, I won't quit my day job. <laughs> but anyway, they actually did not use the actual aircraft for that, but they used uh, a scaled down version of that. However, it was the same model, same concept, basically. Um, model 10 was a successful airliner, and it was built also for military. Uh, it got the designation of C-40. 
Uh, Model 10 also had an interesting connection to Czech Republic, where I live. Before World War II, famous shoe company, shoe producer Bata Shoes, actually bought one of these airplanes, and they shuttled employees all around Europe using a Model 10 Lockheed. Model 12, the one that I've flown, came after Model 10. It, there was a need for a smaller aircraft that was going to be used not necessarily as an airliner, but for corporate shuttle purposes and so forth. And it only had six passenger seats and two seats for the pilot up front. The aircraft also featured a small bathroom uh, as you enter through the door of the aircraft. Model 12, as I mentioned, had only 12 pass uh, six passengers. Uh, it had the same engines from the Model 10, so it was actually a lot more powerful airplane, and it also was a lot faster than the Model 10. And it was, an, again, like Model 10, all metal aircraft. Um, it featured the wing spar in the middle of the fuselage, and because of that, you, there's a portion of it that you actually step over or step on in order to get to the front seats of the passenger compartment. Uh, the first flight... Uh, first flight of the Model 12, it, there's, there's an interesting thing. Uh, it actually came off of a competition by the U.S. government. U.S. government said, okay, we're going to give you guys a deadline, and by that deadline, you will produce an aircraft that will satisfy our needs. And the deadline was June 27, 1936. So the very first flight of the Model 12 was done, June 27th, 1936, at 12.12 p.m. Coincidence? Hardly. It was actually done intentionally. Another contester of this airplane was a Beach 18, which did not make the deadline. However, when the war broke out, Model 12's production ended in 1941 because Lockheed was busier producing P-38 lighting and other kind of different combat aircraft. However, Beechcraft kept production of the Beach 18 going, and because of that, there's only a handful of the Lockheed Model 12 airplanes built in the world. However, Beach 18 has been produced by thousands. Okay, at this point, we already started the left, left engine, engine to start the right side. Let's listen to the way it starts. Here we are taxiing out after our, having done our run-up to for the takeoff. It's an uncontrolled field, so everybody's talking on the frequency. Here we are. Let's listen to those radials. It is amazing. Just music to my ears. I won't talk that much so that you can actually yeah. listen to that takeoff of those two radials, Pratt and Whitney radials. Alright, here we go. A 
about 60 knots the tail comes off the ground and about 80 you lift off. Once you lift off as you can see the gear comes uh, up and it's done fairly quick but fairly uh, close to the ground and because according to the pilot it said that it adds quite a bit of a drag on the takeoff and you don't want to have an engine failure while you have that drag hanging out. And here is uh, yours truly flying this aircraft. It was a pretty bumpy day. It's not pilot-induced turbulence. I guarantee you. It's a pretty solid airplane. I had a ball flying it. Here I am starting a right turn. And uh, I actually wanted to do steep turns. This is like only uh, 30 degrees of bank. I couldn't do the steep turns because of the fact that we had a passenger in the back that was not feeling really well. So in order to not to make her puke, I just basically limited my banks to 30 degrees, which was even that was too much for her. But we still kept the airplane clean. And after uh, about five minutes of flying in the air, I'm in the back into my passenger seat. Here we are turning uh, base to final and um, just lining up for runway 17 at Stearman Field in Wichita. As I mentioned, it was a fairly gusty day with gusty winds and uh, windy day and with a lot of gusts. So the, um, the view is pretty uh, shaky but that doesn't mean that the airplane is not stable it's an extremely stable airplane if you were in a 172 on this wind you will be getting knocked around quite a bit Yeah. 